Hi, this is Gil Robles, and as I start this painting here, um, what I'm going to do is talk about a topic, and I'm going to say just a few words about this painting, but the topic I want to talk about is uh, a question, or rather a statement, when someone asks me about drawing, or about art, and about what they can do, and about what they want to do, and, and I try to encourage them, and one of the things that keeps coming back is the response but I'm not really good at it I like it but I'm not really good at it or you could really want to be an artist but are just a bit intimidated or, or maybe just feel self-conscious about your abilities and so forth and so you, you, you don't go at it wholeheartedly because you feel you're not you're not ever going to get good or you feel like you're not good at it and you're waiting till you get to a certain point where you're good enough to really, really uh, go after it, I guess, or, or something like that. Well, that, that, that whole idea of I'm not good at it, I'm not really good at it, really doesn't matter. And I'm going to talk about that for a second, uh, in a second rather. Uh, but first, uh, as far as uh, this painting is going to be concerned, and, and uh, I've talked a lot, I've done quite a few videos and, and this method is not different from what I've done before as far as building up this uh, um, grayscale and then painting over it and, and it's not something that's unique to me or at all or, or unique to, to it's it's to anybody really it's it's an old method um, in, in traditional painting as well as digital so um, but what you see as the painting builds is a painting is basically a series of, of, of best guesses the from the moment you start putting down a line or brushstroke or whatever the idea is that I believe that this starts here I believe that the head should start here or, or you know the eyes fall here and so forth it's just a series of best guesses and then as you go on what you're doing with the rest of the painting is you're making corrections because the guesses may be a little bit off or you know it, it, you move from one thing to the next as well it's just you you guess where the head goes then you guess you know you guess where it falls on on, on, on the, the space provided then you guess where where um, the eyes fall you guess where where the nose you, you start making guesses and breaking things down and creating a kind of map for putting over the values then you guess what are the best values here and so forth and and uh, um, as you go along you make corrections so this painting that you're viewing is is a series of, of, of best guesses and corrections at times it looked awful to me as I painted it at times I can see the, the mistakes that I've made in the drawing and then um, and then during those times or after what when I see what I see I, I may I go ahead and make the corrections but that's what you're going to be viewing as, as this painting goes along and also listen to me and listening to what I have to say about the um, why when someone says but I'm not good at it really doesn't matter when it comes to drawing because what matters more is what do you want to be what do you want to be do you want to be good you know, do you want to be good at this? You know, what what is it that you, you're trying to accomplish when you draw? I, I mean, if you are drawing, you obviously have a, 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 a liking for it. I don't know how far that liking goes. Um, you, you may or may not have talent. You know, there are people who have a, a great deal of talent, people who are dripping with talent. But talent, at the most, what talent is, is talent is a kind of boost. Talent is its kind of um, head start, but as I mean, there, there are a lot of people who made videos on this, and, and uh, basically it adds up to the same thing. Talent can only take you so far. You know, there, there, there's, um, there's a whole lot of, lot of other things. Well, there's one basic thing that needs to kick in beyond the talent. And even those who do not have the talent, if they have this, can grow beyond talent. And that's discipline. 
that's the discipline to, 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 to practice every day, the discipline to want to grow and be better. You know, you have discipline and that's what matters. It's, it's, um, you have to decide not what you can do, but what you want to do. And then you have to determine that you're going to have the discipline to learn what you need to learn to be as good as you can get. And then, um, and then you have to practice that every day. Um, art isn't like anything else. If you're a dancer, you practice. If you're a musician, you practice. It's whatever you do, you, 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 you're practicing at it. it you know, you, you practice to, to, to hone your craft, to get better. So another thing that matters along with discipline is your passion, your drive to want to be better. That matters. Those things, discipline and passion matter more than talent. Talent, you can, you know, after a certain point, it, it becomes mute. There are people with, with a great deal of talent that relied on their talent and then saw other people pass by them based on their discipline and their passion to want to get better. So talent is not the thing, you know. And also, one of the things you got to stay away from, I, no matter what you do, if you're, if you, like, I, I, um, I was good at art, you know, and that's what I practiced, and I was comfortable in that arena. But the thing is, there are other things. There, there. I was not never good at sports. There are times where, where you know, I, I played sports. I loved baseball, and I still do. And there were times where you know I had my good days, and 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 I enjoyed them. But there are times where you know, most of the times, I really wasn't good at it, and uh, other sports as well kind of awkward and you know whatever but uh the thing is that I played and I had fun and and that was it but one of the things that that happens is that when you're around other people and they're competitive and it doesn't matter whether sports or arts there there's there there comes a lot of put downs sometimes or or uh you see arrogance and stuff like that and that's one thing that you got to stay away from if you're an artist and you want to grow an artist, keep in the company of people who want to encourage you to be better. And I'm not saying that people who don't uh, give you constructive criticism, you want to be able to take constructive criticism, but stay away from put down. The people who put you down is, um, had a teacher in high school, uh, who taught art. And one of the things he said was, you know, stay away from put down artists. Stay away from, from, from that kind of negativity because it doesn't help. Go for, you know what, listen to correction. Listen to uh, um, constructive criticism. Listen to people who tell you that your drawing is off or that, you know what, maybe you need to work on, on, on you know, understanding color and values or whatever, composition whatever listen to that kind of constructive criticism but don't listen to someone who's going to put you down don't listen to someone who says that you know what if you if you're not good by this time you're never going to make it that 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 doesn't make any sense you know what you need to do is decide what you want to do and to, um to be disciplined and carrying out what you you know what your goals are as far as becoming a better artist be passionate about it you know and um stay away from people who would put you down now the other thing is look at other artists look at other artists um don't listen to this this idea that you know what you you can't copy other artists and i'm not talking about copying other artists and then signing your own signature i'm talking about copying to learn even copying somebody's style just, you know, not not for for to keep it, and to, and, but to, to to learn to grow in it. I mean, some of the if you no matter what kind of art you like, if you like comic book art, you're going to see that um, if you look at the artists that you like, that they had looked at other artists that they liked and they had imitated them at some point. And they, you know, some somehow along the way, they grew beyond that imitation to become, to, 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 to develop something totally unique. But you take any artist, somebody who's been around 
uh, it's no longer around, but somebody who I admired was John Basima. John Basima was a great, great uh, a comic book artist. And you look at his work, and um, you can see the influences of other people. Uh, he talked about uh, illustrators like Albert Dorn. Albert Dorn was a big influence on, on, on John Basima, and you can see it in his work, um, especially during the mid '60s, um, and then you could see the uh, you can see within his work uh, um, Albert Dorn's influence. You can see also the influence of other comic book artists like Hal Forster or Alex Raymond, and you can see those influences there. He was definitely influenced by other artists, but now he took it and did something that's totally different. Told not totally different, but you know. It was unique enough to say that, hey, this was, you can tell a drawing by John Basima and, and one by Hal Foster or, or Alex Raymond. There was a difference, you know, and, and that's what you saw. And then there, you know, suppose you wanted to be an illustrator. You look at a guy like Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell was very, very, very influenced by guys like um, uh, J.C. Leyendecker. He was, he was a big Leyendecker fan. And um, he he sought out Lion Decker. He sought out his advice. He, he wanted to learn from him and so forth. Uh, um, and you can see at the very beginning uh, a lot of Lion Decker's influence in Rockwell. Not just in the brushstrokes, which Lion Decker was known for, but in the subject matter as well. So there was a big influence uh, on Norman Rockwell from uh, J.C. Lion Decker. Also. Uh, uh, illustrators like Frank Rodrigo Ruger, Gruger, Gruger, uh, Gruger, um, who uh, didn't do paintings. Or he did very, very few, but most of it was uh, charcoal drawings. Um, and uh, he did these these illustrations, these drawings that that and and at the time Gruger was was an illustrator. Color was not as well developed as it was with uh, uh, Lion Decker and with uh, and later on with Norman Rockwell. So there was mostly black and white illustrations during Gruger's lifetime. Um, and he ventured into color. Uh, sometimes when you did color, color was printed in black and white regardless uh, of the color that was there or sometimes it was printed in color but it didn't look like the, the color reproductions that came later on. Um, but then you could look at um, guys like um, like Michelangelo. Michelangelo, a fine artist, uh, um, one of the great masters of art. He copied from frescoes uh, um, while he when he was young the works of artists before him to learn from them. So you know what? Uh, this is kind of like a tradition where you learn from the people who had preceded you. So you know what? Enjoy looking at art. You know, enjoy uh, uh, learning from the artwork of the past. Even uh, presently, you can look at the artists around you who are, um, uh, you know, who are working in the field now, regardless of what, whether they're illustrators, fine artists, or, or comic book artists. And, you know, you can learn from them as well. You don't have to go all the way to the past. Usually, the, our, our first link to the past is to look at the artists who are, are in the field now and then learn about their influences, which is what I love to do. That's how I learned about uh, Hal Foster and Alex Raymond and Milton Kniff and, and Will Eisner. And um, I, I learned about Lion Decker and Albert Dorn because I followed the trail. I kind of looked at the artists around me and um, I, I, I was interested to find out who were the artists that influenced them. And that led me to the past. You know, so you can, you can learn that way from, from the artists around you. Even if you go, if you're a comic book artist, I, one, of the, one of the great things about comic book artists is that you, you, you have access to them at conventions and so forth. And you can ask questions. Ask questions uh, about how they learned, what they learned. And so forth, and or, you know, you can you can do that on social media as well. There, there are uh, other, like if there's not YouTube, there's Twitch, there's there's, there's uh, um, Facebook, 
Twitter, you know, all these ways of, of, of reaching out to the people that you admire to ask questions, you know, and, and to, in order for you to learn. Um, and don't just admire the drawings, learn from them, learn, you know, color, drawing, composition, learn about the artist and so forth, like I said. So all these things are, are open to you, you know, and the, the idea of you're not good enough or, or, you know, I'm not good at it doesn't really matter. What matters is what do you want, you know, and how badly do you want it? That's about it. You know, you, you, you develop your, your ability and your, your drawing and your passion and, and you can, you can, you can go past talent and that's pretty much it. So before I go off here, I'm coming close to the end now. Um, let me just mention that I have a Patreon page, uh, which would help to support this channel, support what I do. I'll leave the link below. There are a lot of things on Patreon that you can get for your support. As far as there's, there's a sketchbook that goes to every tier on Patreon. There are also videos that I post from time to time, exclusive to Patreon, and 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 uh, um, also uh, images, which you can download uh, once a month from uh, Patreon. All right. So support me, support this channel. I will see you then. Bye-bye.